at this HIHA um, uh, in Frankfurt, we presented our work on CAR T cell and microbiome. And so, uh, the, um, the role of the microbiome has become pretty clear with immune checkpoint inhibitors and solid tumors. However, uh, before our work, it was not really known if the gut microbiome would affect CAR T cell therapy. And um, the, uh, the last decade, I would say, the gut microbiome has been associated with um, heart disease, depression, kidney disease, and many types of uh, human diseases, but not yet has been studied in the setting of CAR T-cell. So what we did, uh, we set up a collaboration with Memorial Sloan Kettering, the group of Marcel van den Brink and Menold Smith, and we uh, analyzed two cohorts of patients. One cohort is a retrospective cohort of about 200 patients where we uh, look at the use of antibiotics uh, in the four weeks before CAR T-cell infusion, and uh, we focus on antibiotics because we didn't have stool samples for this retrospective cohort, and um, antibiotics are known to damage the microbiome. Um, in the second court, instead, is about 50 patients where we actually collected the stools before CAR infusion, and we analyzed the uh, microbiome with um, you know, sequencing. And so the results were pretty interesting because we saw that um, in the retrospective cohort, patients receiving antibiotics were doing worse as compared to patients not receiving antibiotics both in terms of progression of survival and overall survival. Then we focus on a specific subset of antibiotics that we call PIM, P-I-M, um, that include uh, piperacillin tazobactam, uh, imipenem, and meropenem. Why we chose them? We chose them because they are known to damage the gut microbiome. And so we look at them, and uh, in particular, this subset of antibiotics were particularly bad um, against the microbiome, and they were associated with poor uh, progression of survival and, and very poor overall survival. We then, of course, asked the question, well, um, there was a reason if these patients were getting antibiotics, right? Probably they had progressive disease or they were immunocompromised, so more advanced disease. But in a multivariate analysis, the use of antibiotics was still an independent factor uh, correlated with the overall survival. So we think there is a specific role for the antibiotics not only because they're given to patients that need that and they are more advanced. And so this was for the retrospective cohort. Then obviously we uh, switched to the uh, prospective cohort where we took the stool from patients before CAR infusion, we analyzed them, and the interesting finding were, was that first of all the, um, let's say the quality, the um, um, diversity of the stools in the CAR T-cell patient um, is, is worse than healthy individual. So in other words, they have a damaged uh, microbiome, so less diversity, which is usually associated with a damaged microbiome. And um, they were very different from healthy individuals, also in terms of composition, specific bugs that they had in the microbiome. And interestingly, uh, we identified some taxa that they were associated with outcomes. So, for example, ruminococcus, uh, fecalibacterium were associated with the complete responses, while um, bacteroides, for example, were associated with more toxicity. So in other words, if you have a different composition of the gut microbiome, you might have different outcome of the CAR T-cell therapy. So this was the study uh, that we presented uh, about the uh, gut microbiome and CAR T-cell therapy. Obviously, the next step for this study is to try to develop strategies and therapies, right? And so, following the example of immune checkpoint inhibitors, you might, you might think about using fecal material transfer, using prebiotics, probiotics, together with CAR T-cell, but we need more work in the lab to, and also in the clinic, um, in terms of correlative studies to really identify the best approach. Mm -hmm.